Council is at 7.06 p.m. on Monday evening, September the 15th, the finance meeting. Um, this evening, our chairman, Council President uh, Bob Sullivan, could not be able to attend this meeting this evening, so he's asked me to fill in and, and chair the meeting. Councilors, uh, just a couple of uh, housekeeping items just before we, we do get going. Um, I do have a few letters that are in front of me in regards to some people that are unable to attend this evening. Please be advised I am in receipt of your request for my attendance at the Standing Committee on Finance, Monday, September 15, 2014, relative to the resolve regarding Chief Robin Hayden in Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 32, Section 91, B and C, in Resolve Compensation Committee. However, I will be on vacation, unable to attend the finance meeting, and that is from our personnel director, Maureen Cruz. Also, counselors, I also have a letter in front of me. Uh, to Mr. Zioli, City Clerk, I would like to withdraw from the September 15, 2014 Finance Committee agenda appointment of Fred Fontaine to the position of Deputy Director of Brockton Emergency Management Agency for the City of, of Brockton, and we'll get back to that in a couple of seconds. Also, counselors, before us um, is a, a letter from our Chief of uh, Police, Mr. Hayden, who has indicated that he is on vacation and was unable to attend the finance meeting scheduled for this evening, and that is in regards also um, to the discussion and limitations placed on the ability to work more than 960 hours per year pursuant to Chapter General Laws, Section 32, Section 91B and C. Council, as you also uh, would note, even with, your, with the agenda that you received um, over, in, in the mail over the weekend, you do have several items on the agenda that have been postponed over the last uh, several months, so you may not have the backup material for those items, like items number 8, 9, 10, 11, um, and I believe 14 and 15, unless you happen to have gone through your other agendas to bring that information, um, you do not have them included uh, primarily in this particular agenda. And also, counselors, just for scheduling purposes, we're pretty much on track to coming out of our summer schedule here this evening for finance meeting. Uh, we'll have a city council meeting next Monday evening here, September 22nd at 8 p.m. Council President has indicated to me that on Monday evening, September the 29th, he has scheduled a joint meeting with the mayor, the school committee, and southeastern regional uh, district members uh, to have a, a joint meeting at the East Middle School at 6.30 p.m. on that night. And then we'll go into October uh, with our, back to our four Mondays um, of finance and city council, October 6th being finance. And the following week, you'll be um, on Tuesday evening because you have the holiday. So we're, we're coming out of the, the uh, summer schedule. So um, with that being said, um, before we even move to the agenda, Councilor Barnes. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. President, I would ask uh, that my colleagues support a motion to put uh, number one, the appointment of Mr. Bragg, um, at the end of the appointments, uh, because the Chairman of the Water Commission, Mr. Ozzie Jordan, is on his way here and would like to be here for the questioning um, and for that particular part of the, the session. And if that's something that can happen. He's not here, he's running late um, in Boston and has asked for that. Mr. President, through the Chair, uh, Go ahead. I don't see a need that Mr. Ozzie Jordan has to be here. This is an appointment from the mayor's office, Council. He asked me to just bring it forward to ask if um, my colleagues would support that. I, I'm I just think what the Council's forward. request is that we take number one and move it to uh, six. To after number six, however it falls, uh, we have one appointment that's been withdrawn. And then if he's not here, he, he's not playing a role in any questioning. You're correct, Council, because he need not to be, but just to listen if he wants to, that's fine. But, you know, that's, that's in the form of a motion, and I second. heard a second. Second. Was there a second? Second, yeah. Councilor Stewart made a second. All in favor? Opposed? All right, so let's do that again, because I didn't, I didn't go. All in favor? Opposed? Does not carry, correct? Okay. I didn't count. Yeah, it doesn't carry. Okay, thank no, you. Does not carry. Okay, so um, at, at that point, Madam Chair, we'll begin with item number one. Appointment James L. Bragg as a member of the Water Commission for a three-year term ending in July 2017, invited James L. Bragg. Good evening, Mr. Bragg. Good evening. Any comment? Uh, yes, uh, I have a statement. I understand I've been called back to this uh, committee because there's been a question about my qu uh, qualifications of the water, water commissioner. According to the Brockton ordinance, uh, code ordinance part two, chapter 
23, Article 2, Section 2A, I meet all current standing, uh, standing requirements of this ordinance. It should also be n noted, uh, uh, this point of qualification should be noted that uh, Council President uh, <coughs> Robert Sullivan has already appointed Commissioner Dan Murphy, who has extensive experience in the field of engineering. I view my professional experience dealing with watersheds, numerous cities commissions, engineers, and inspectors has led me to, to have the insight into this field. Being a Vietnam veteran, I've raised three children in this great city, volunteered and participated in countless com community activities over the 40 years of living here. I'd be happy to answer any further questions. Thank you. Questions? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councilor Stadinsky. Councilor Stadinsky from Ward 4. Good evening, Jim. First of all, I want to thank you for your volunteering. Thank it's you. much appreciated all you have done. Now, I have to make a statement before I ask another question, but what it is is the mayor's appointments are three. All three have to have extensive experience in the field. And one of them is engineering, the one he's put you in for, but it also says uh, there's an, a person has to have extensive experience in the field of administration or business, has to be extensive experience in the field of finance or accounting, and then num uh, a member with extensive experience in the field of engineering. By the ordinance, this is the mayor's appointment. It has nothing to do with President Sullivan's appointment. And it's not anything to do personally with you. He's not followed the protocol. And with that, I'll, I'll, I, I appreciate your service in the military, too. I want you to know that. But with that, uh, I'm going to uh, defer. That's all I had to say. Thank you, Counselor. Thank you. Counselors, any other, any other questions for, for Mr. Bragg? Counselor. Motion to recommend favorably. Second. Motion was made and second to recommend favorably. On the motion, Councilor Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Bragg, uh, good evening. Um, you and I had a conversation yesterday, and there was some concern from um, some members here of the council that your name came forward um, because you're a major supporter of the power plant and there is some fear behind some folks in the community that while you are appointed to the Water Commission, that you would be uh, a sure vote for the uh, proposed uh, power plant and whatever, whatever else, uh, other requirements it actually has. We all know that you know, we've got the water issue and all the other stuff. So can you basically clarify to both us in the council and the folks watching us at home that your appointment by the mayor is not just because or, or it's because you are a major proponent of the power plant? Um, first of all, the Supreme Court, uh, state Supreme Court ruling came out that the power plant can't use portable water, okay? So, and as far as this gray water or the sewer water, the Water Commissioner has no jurisdiction whatsoever over the sewer water. So as a commissioner, and I think Mr. Jordan would agree with me, we have no say over what happens with the power plant whatsoever. And if it came down to me voting on the power plant, I'm going to have to tell you one thing. My personal views are one thing. What I would do if a decision ever came down that was brought into question, I would look at all the facts, all the figures, what is the best thing for the city of Brockton, and what the consensus was of the people of the city of Brockton. My personal views I'd put aside, and I think I can, uh, I can uh, refer to back to when I was uh, a, a trustee of the Brockton War Memorial. They wanted to name the uh, uh, auditorium after Mr. Feinberg, and the Veterans Council was very upset about it. I attended the meeting and said, you know, I will always vote the will of the Veterans Council, 
even though I don't agree with it. And I would have if it came down to that. I here to serve the city of Brockton. What's best for the city of Brockton? Thank you, Mr. Wright. I'm not. I Council, got another go one. Ahead. You still have the floor. Um, as you know, the um, the water commission plays an important part on on, on decisions that affect <coughs> water. Period in this community. <coughs> you know, recently there's been talk about this proposal that's out there. I know the mayor met with quite a few councillors to discuss the possibility of purchasing the water plant, the Aquaria water plant. If appointed to the Water Commission, what are your views or what is your view in the, uh, in the proposal or in the proposed purchase of this water plant? Well, first of all, I really don't have the facts and I need to do my homework and search out the answers. I have a, more questions about the water plant. Um, and I would not vote one way or the other on it till I had these questions answered. There remains a lot of questions there. And it's gotta be the right thing for the city of Brockton. I mean, we can't go on the way we have been with this uh, desal plant. But I don't know if this is the right answer either. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Council. On the motion, Councilor Barnes. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bragg, we spoke briefly downstairs. Yes. Um, but the issue that we kind of spoke about was actually echoed by my colleague, um, Councilor Stelinski. How do you address that particular issue, that in the ordinance, it clearly says, and you had your copy and I had mine, and it clearly says that the appointments by the mayor need to fulfill those three um, areas of expertise, and that the two from the president are pretty much kind of up in the air. They can be, you know, any, any, kind, any resident with any kind of um, experience. So pointing out that uh, Mr. Murphy is um, an engineer, a, tr a transportation engineer, as I understand, um, how does that fulfill from the ordinance the engineer position that is available that the mayor is to appoint? As far as... Mr. Murphy, I don't know his credentials, so I, I couldn't address Mr. Murphy. All I can say is my field, and I was a supervisor of foreman, I owned businesses, I dealt with several watersheds, I dealt with water commissions. As a supervisor, I was responsible for getting projects done, rerouting uh, streams and adding and detracting. Um, I had extensive uh, uh, dealings with Norwood Engineering uh, oh, for 10 or 12 years. I built several homes uh, and um, <coughs> I feel like I have the experience that needed on, the, on this board. Do you hold, uh, in addition to the four licenses that you hold here uh, on your resume that you submitted, are any of, these, any of these specific to engineering, or are they all focused on construction? Construction. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor DiNapoli, on the motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Bragg. We go back a long time, you and I. And, uh, you know, we don't want to make this a fiasco like what happened in the last city council meeting on the appointment of other appointees to the Water Commission. They make, they make recommendations to this body and we vote on it. You, you know, everybody thinks that the Water Commission, they have a lot of power. They make recommendations, folks. They don't have a lot of power. The power is sitting here, the 11 of us. We make the decisions on this. Personally, I don't have a problem with Mr. Bragg being appointed to the Water Commission. They have to vote on several issues right now, and they're stuck with four people. I should, I take that back. They're not stuck. They only have four members on, on, the, on the commission. And uh, they're, they're, evidently there's some, they need a tie-breaking vote. And I guess Mr. Bragg will be the fifth member, <clears throat> and they can reach some kind of decisions on certain water issues that we're having in the city. And everybody's afraid 
that if Mr. Bragg is appointed, that somehow we're going to buy Aquaria. Well, for the mayor to buy Aquaria, he needs eight votes on this body, <coughs> okay? He's got a lot of work to do to convince this body for those eight votes. As for Mr. Bragg, Mr. Bragg, I, I told you I will support you. We're, we're friends. We go back a long ways. And I really don't see a problem with this appointment on thank the you. Water Commission. And I thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor du <coughs> Dubois. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On the, on the uh, motion. On the motion. And thank you. Congratulations on, on your nomination as well. Thank you very much. Um, so for me, there's been a lot of divisiveness in, in appointments since this year started that I've never experienced before. And I'm really sorry that you're a part of all of it because I don't think it has anything to do with you personally and your commitment to the city and your love for the city and your being a, um, a veteran and being a really upstanding member of Brockton's um, culture. So that, that has nothing to do with it. For me, it's, I took an oath, as every single city councilor here did, to uphold the city's laws. And, um, and that's something that is our commitment. And it has nothing to do with Mr. Bragg or anybody else that's appointed to these positions. And the ordinance is clear that these positions need to have certain requirements that are not being fulfilled. And so for me, it's sad for me that the mayor took this step to appoint someone that is a wholly qualified human being and capable of independent thought, 100%, I believe, but just does not clearly fit the ordinance that is in the laws in the books. And so that is why I'm gonna be hoping that this gets tabled and I will be voting no if it's, I'm forced to, because really it's the mayor's failure. It's not Mr. Bragg's failure. He should not be appointing people that are not um, in line with the ordinances. And the reason why it's important is only the mayor's appointments can be chair of this committee. So to say that someone else's engineering experience um, be them the resident appointee based on this city ordinance, the resident appointee can have any qualifications and their sole job on the counts on this water commission is to speak for the residents. The mayor's appointees are the ones that come with the professional experience and they are the only three members that can chair the board. So saying that the city council president's appointment, somehow you interpret the law that we can decide that we'll just take him. So can we sit back and then say he can also be chair? Because that would be us rewriting the ordinance. And if that is rewriting the ordinance, then appointing someone that's outside the field that is clearly stated in the ordinance is also violating the ordinance. So I just want to remind everybody here in the chamber that it's never about the person. It's really about how each of us interpret our responsibility when we got sworn in on, um, on Inauguration Day. And I take that responsibility seriously, and I'm not going to put a mar on my own personal moral judgment on what the, what the ordinance says because a human being is a good person that's before me and a capable man. This is really going to be on each of us and how we interpret our moral obligation to the city's ordinances. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, uh, Councilor. Councilor Dewa. Councilor. Excuse me. Okay, Mr. Bragg, did you? Could I make a comment? I'll, I'll allow you to respond. Uh, do you have a copy of the ordinance in front of you? I do. Okay. Do you see the, uh, the uh, about uh, two-thirds of the way down, it says thereafter? I don't there, read it the same way you do. Conservation, thereafter? I don't read it the same way you do. Thereafter is after the, the uh, commission has been formed. I don't read it the same way you do, okay. and neither okay. do many other people. And that's why up, in, up until this point, we've <coughs> never had a mayor's appointment that didn't fit into one of those three categories. And we've never had a mayor's appointment who didn't, who was, who, we never had a resident's appointment be able to be chair. 
So if we're going to rewrite the ordinance just for one person, we should go through the proper form and send it to the ordinance committee and have a public hearing on it, and then the people can come out and say, I think this is a good idea or a bad idea. We shouldn't be changing city ordinances just based on personal pleasure without it being written down. <clears throat> so thank you. Thank you, so Council. So what are you thank saying? You. You're saying is this is I'm about done with my questioning. I want to move forward a couple of the Okay. Councilors have a question on the motion, Councilor Cruz. Thank you, on the motion. I'd just like to say, is, uh, and I don't necessarily agree with some of the interpretations, but what I do agree with, as somebody who was around the city uh, government back when the Water Commission was formed, there was a reason that the phrase extensive background in engineering and not an engineering deg degree was used. And in fact, in, at times, the person who had that spot was a construction person. As somebody that comes from the construction industry, somebody with extensive construction experience, to me has, con has a background in engineering. The, the ordinance does not state an engineering degree. The ordinance states a background in engineering. To me, and I've known Mr. Bragg, I know his work, I know where he's worked through the years. To me, that construction experience is experience in engineering uh, because I know the kind of work and the kind of projects that he's had to work on in the past. And again, coming out of the construction industry, I can tell you that that phrase was specifically used for a reason by the council that cr created that because it didn't, they weren't necessarily looking for somebody with an engineering degree. That could have been easily put into that, uh, that ordinance and it wasn't. It was somebody with a background in engineering. And again, uh, open to interpretation, but as somebody from the construction industry, I can tell you that a project manager in construction has a background in engineering. And, uh, that's, I'd just like to make that statement. That's why I don't say that uh, we're shirking our responsibility by appointing somebody if he didn't have construction experience, extensive construction experience in much commercial work, I wouldn't consider it a background in engineering. I happen to in this case, so that's why I vote that way. Thank, thank you, Mr. You, thank Chairman. You, Council. Council Monaghan, did you have? No, Timmy's. thank you. You're all set? Uh, Council uh, uh, Denafley, and then we're gonna move uh, on. On the motion again, um, just for clarification, uh, uh, this a lot of people don't know how the Water Commission was started. The Water Commission, going back many, many years ago, was started because Brockton had a water band and we had droughts and we needed somebody to look into an alternate source of water. And that's how the Water Commission was started. Now, do we need a Water Commission today? No, because we have an abundance of water. We have aquaria, we have, you know, you know, this is, it's, it's, we're going in the wrong directions, folks. You know, it's, it's not a big deal. You know, the board, the Water Commission, we don't need them anymore. Maybe we should write them off. We don't need them. We can make decisions without them now. We don't have, we don't have a, a, a band on water. We have plenty of water in the city. We can't sell enough water in the city. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're all set, Council. I'm all set. Okay, great. Um, no other further questions. It's, it's, a motion's been made and second to refer it back to the I committee on uh, finance. And I'm going to ask the clerk to have a roll call vote so that we have this correct. To send the appointment back to the full city council by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Shirley Azak. Yes. Shana Barnes. No. Timothy Cruz. Yes. Dennis DiNapoli. Yes. Michelle Dubois. No. Dennis Ianeri. Yes. Tom Monahan. Yes. Moises Rodriguez. Yes. Jazz Stewart. Yes. Paul Studensky. No. The A's have it. The A's have it. Okay, it goes back to the full city council uh, with a favorable recommendation to be heard next uh, next Monday evening. Thank you, Mr. Bragg. Thank you. Um, item number two, Councillor Cruz. Uh, after uh, I believe you have a letter to read, but uh, I'd make a motion to table uh, this appointment. Second. 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 Motion has been made and seconded to table this appointment because it has been withdrawn, but I think it's the best way is we leave it on the table. All in favor of tabling? Opposed? It's tabled. We go to item number three, Madam Clerk. Appointment, Cindy Costco, 12 Montella Street, Extension Brockton to the Cemetery's Board of Trustees for a five-year term ending August 2019. Invited Cindy Costco. Okay, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening, Cindy, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, like to make a statement? No. no. Okay. <laughs> any, uh, any, um, any questions for uh, Ms. Costa? Anyone? Motion for a favorable recommendation. Second. Motion for made and seconded for a favorable recommendation. All in favor? 
close, go back to the full city council next week with Thank a favorable you. recommendation. Thank you. Thank you for serving. Item number four. Appointment, Daniel DePina of Brockton to the Cemetery's Board of Trustees for a five-year term ending August 2019, invited Daniel DePina. Hi, Daniel. How are you? Good evening. How are you doing, sir? Good. I'd like to make a... Uh, Opening statement. Honor and, honor and privilege to be here tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for wanting to serve as well. Motion to recommend favorable. Second. Motion has been made and second to recommend favorable to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council next next week for Thank appointment. Thank you. Thank you. Item number four, uh, five, excuse me. Appointment William G. Keene of Rockton to the Board of Fire Commissioners for five year <clears throat> term ending August 2019. How are you, William? Good. Thank you. How are you? Good. Thank you. Any uh, statement or anything? Uh, I don't. Okay. Just Questions, counselors? Motion to recommend favorable. Second. Motion has been made and second for favorable recommendation back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council. Thank you. Thank you, counsel. Thank you for serving. Next item is number six. Appointment Barbara King, 56 Howland Street, Brockton, to the Brockton Cable Advisory Board for a three year term ending August 2017. Invited Barbara King. Good evening, Barbara. How are you? Good evening. Any statement? No. No? Any questions, counselors? Uh, actually, I have one. Councilor Barnes. Hi, how are you doing? Hey. <laughs> um, I looked on your uh, resume that you submitted and going to cable, I know there's been a real big push to um, have cable be more involved with um, the high school and, and with um, the technology and media mm -hmm. development at the high school and some of the other schools. And I see that you have um, some public school experience. Yes. So I, I'm just really happy that you'll be able to kind of morph that in, in uh, on the board now. Um, and, we're lucky to have you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Councilors? Motion to recommend favorably. Second. second. Motion has been made and second to recommend favorably to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council Thank with you. a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Um, just before we continue on, uh, Councilor Cruz, if I might, I need a motion on item number 13. That's the, that's the resolve in regards to... Um, I believe it is Aquaria. Uh, Council Sullivan's resolving. He had asked if we could postpone to the next uh, finance meeting. Second. Motion been made and second that we postpone this one to the next finance meeting, which would be October the 6th. All in favor of postponing? Second. We'll hold that one till then. And Mr. Council President. Dubois. May I please um, take number 14 out of order? Motion to take number second. 14 out of order. Motion been made and second. All in favor? Opposed? We're going to take number 14 out of order. Madam <clears throat> Clerk. Resolved that the city CFO confer with the assessor's department and get a full accounting by year of any and all funds from reserve for abatements and assessment accounts that may be made available. I invited John A. Conan, Chief Financial Officer, Paul J. Sullivan, Chairman of Assessors. Good, Good evening. evening, Mr. Sullivan. Good evening, Council President. How are you? I'm well, and you? Good, thank you. And good evening, Councillors. <laughs> any uh, uh, opening? Go ahead. Uh, it's just a. Um, I'm here to answer any questions. Um, this information has been distributed on uh, a few occasions to you regarding the overlay surplus. And briefly, I'll just read what the IGR says for the um, overlay surplus. Uh, each year, uh, we have to reserve some money to have for an allowance for abatements, exemptions. Any type of uh, exemptions would be for elderly exemptions, veterans exemptions. Um, and then the abatements are for uh, any cases that are um, warranted to adjust the value, which would equate to a tax refund to the taxpayer. So we need to have a sum of money in the account, and each year that account can change. Um, it has increased over the years due to the increase in our construction in uh, the buildings throughout the city. So we do get periodically uh, reviewed by the DOR on an annual basis just to make sure that there is sufficient money in there and um, that it's a it's a um, moving target as far as what the amount is depending upon what we are paying out so with that I'll entertain any questions you may have Councilor, I'll go to Councilor Dubois for us because it was her resolve Councilor thank you so much yes so um, this has been postponed for quite a while so I appreciate your patience and some some folks at home if they follow along might not remember so um, recently within the last year or so we've actually um, the city and through your authority has been able to release some of the funds um, in these accounts some of them how yes. many different how many funds wasn't it like three different years or one year in particular one? Uh, it was a few years back. 
and we declared a surplus so that money was available to the city. And so do you remember what year that was from? That would have been 2007. Okay, so there's still in that 2007 account. Um, it was about $4,000 in that account. Okay. It was a um, overlay surplus declared of $345,000. So there's the beginning balance um, of that year was, was 350000 something, mm -hmm. and then all the different cases go in and out, and then the releases happen that we can use in our general fund? Yeah, we try to settle the cases, Yep. and sometimes they do linger from year to year. And we, if, if we look at the cases that are still on the books, if there's sufficient monies in there that we have to cover it, we can declare a surplus for the any excess. And so that requires you to more or less work hand in hand with the law department to just follow up and make no, sure that- No, it's at the no. discretion of the Board of Assessors. Oh, no, I just mean to know how the cases are going. Or do you hire your own attorneys to do this as we well? We hire city attorneys and we sometimes hire outside attorneys if we had to. Okay, so once the case gets settled, you make the Board of Assessors makes a, the decision on if there's enough funds available to, um, to cover any potential lawsuits against the city. And if, and if there is enough and there's an excess, then you can release those funds to the city. Correct. Okay, and how often does that happen? Is that like a... How Periodically we review the cases. Random. Yeah. I mean, I get lists from the appellate tax board um, roughly every couple of weeks or whatever. Okay, great. It depends on when the cases. And a lot of them do linger. Some of them you can settle. Some are withdrawn. It's, it's, a, it's a random target. And so in the list of the cases that you gave us yep. in the back of the materials, um, some of them have dates. So I can like project and see, okay, so one case was heard on, is going to be heard on September 17th, all the stuff. One was heard on July 5th of this year. So the ones with no case dates, those have been haven't settled. been They have not yet. been scheduled yet. Okay. And is it normal that... Or is it typical that any year would, like uh, when you're in the current year or the year, you know, just a few after would be around a million or two million dollars? Because the 2014 is two million, what, the 2012 is what, around 1.5 million right For now? the overlay? Yeah. The overlay. Is typical? The overlay, you have to run a three-year average, and the overlay was increased because of the new growth that the city uh, had, which was through the hospital. So you automatically retain that overlay for potential issues? Uh, yes. Even if there aren't any lawsuits against the city? If there's no lawsuits, if there's no filings, it's actually, it's an abatement where they disagree with the value. It's not a lawsuit. Yeah, I'm sorry. They filed the appellate tax board and they disagree with the value. And we are assumed to be correct in our valuation. Otherwise, we would not get certified by the Department of Revenue. But we still need to reserve for elderly exemptions, veterans, and cases that, although we always assume that we're correct, sometimes we're told we're not correct, and there's a judgment in a sense that says you owe X amount of dollars, and you have to be able to pay that. So um, let's. So when is that amount determined? So we're going into 2015. Yeah. Do you already know how much you're going to have um, reserved in the 2015 overlay, or that would be for the 2016? Like, when do you make those determinations? For FY15, we'll be setting that up when we do the classification in December. Okay, and it's based on the classification. Some of it, we have All our right. budget. We have to fund the budget. We need to have excess money in the overlay. Mm -hmm. The DOR, the Department of Revenue, will review that to make sure that there is sufficient monies in there based on past practice and okay. going forward. And if it, you know, you have to have that in there, otherwise you wouldn't be certified to send out the tax bills. Well, thank you very much for clarifying all this for me. You're thank welcome. You, thank Chairman. you, uh, Councilor. Councilor, is there any other questions for Mr. Sullivan in regards to this matter? Well, then at this time, I motion to approve. Second. Recommend favorably. Second. Motion to second. Thank you. And second to recommend favorably back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Sullivan. Have a good evening. Appreciate it. We will go back to um, item number seven, Madam Clerk. Order that the City of Brockton Government Study Committee is hereby established to be comprised of seven citizens of the city. 
three of whom are to be appointed by the mayor and four of whom are to be appointed by the city council president. Each committee member shall be a registered voter and to the extent possible possess expertise or knowledge relevant to the work of such government study committee, the GSC. The GSC is charged with exploring by whatever means it deems appropriate all aspects of the local government organization and structure. The strengths and weaknesses in the Brockton's current form of government and areas for improvement alternative models of government and recommend changes in such as such organization and structure including but not limited to the terms of office and the method of selection of officials consistent with the needs of the city and designed to achieve greater efficiency and effectiveness in the delivery of government services invited honorable mayor bill carpenter christopher cooney president and ceo of chamber of commerce thomas minicello vice chair school committee Councils, I also need to make mention to the clerk did indicate to me that uh, Chris Cooney did uh, make contact with her office and indicated that he could not be present here this evening. Council Stewart, I know it's your resolve, so. Yeah, Mr. Chairperson, I'd like to have this postponed to the next uh, FinCom meeting because the president isn't here, who I would like to be a part of the conversation, and the vice chair of the school committee is not present, as well as, of course, Mr. Cooney. I will say before I make that uh, recommendation is that um, from my research, it's common that communities review their charter on a regular basis every five years every 10 years uh, we haven't done it at, uh, in, in over 50 years um, and so I think it's a worthwhile effort um, simply because we're operating from a structure that existed in, in the middle of the last century and so it's worth looking into I like to, to most to suggest that we move it to the next uh, FinCom meeting okay second oh, motion been made and seconded that we postpone this item to our next FinCom meeting which will be October the 6th all in favor Opposed? It goes to our next uh, FinCon meeting. We'll go to item number eight, Madam Clerk. Order that pursuant to section 23-30 F4, the City Council hereby approves a rule and regulation entitled Irrigation Outside Usage Meters adopted by the Water Commission, invited Larry Raleigh, no. Acting Commissioner of DPW, Brian Creedon, Water System Manager, DPW, and Ozzy Jordan, Chairman of Brockton Water Commission. So it's going to go to ordinance. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Jordan. How are you? Fine. Very good. I think we're familiar with this. If not, I can do a quick overview. If you could. Well, I, I, I would do a quick overview. Yeah. Sure. Um, I think most of you have a copy of the ordinance itself, proposed ordinance. The irrigation outside usage meters uh, is to be Put in, if it's put in place, would go to would be billed quarterly, and would be the current block rates of whoever was asking to have these meters installed on their uh, facilities, whether it be a private home or commercial or whatever it may be. There are one, two, three, four, five, six areas applications for uh, requirement of fees, the installation requirements, the maintenance, the temporary dis discontinuance and tampering, and I'll just quickly go through this very quickly. It's an annual application that's made to the water department. That would cost you $10 a year. That's annual. Uh, the superintendent of utilities, Mr. Raleigh, would uh, approve the usage. You'd have to put in that, in that application the usage, and that would be approved, and how that water would be used. The customer would be responsible for all meter costs, including installation in any and all uh, devices that would be associated with that. And again, let me repeat that. The customer is responsible for the meter cost, the installation in any and all associations with that. Uh, there's, a, there's a possibility also that a service charge would be connected with this because mm -hmm. the water department would install the meter itself and any cost in that, including any fittings, would be, again, charged back to the person requesting. Um, any and all, one of the other parts of this is this would be inspected by the Water Department, of course, and before this could be accomplished, any and all money that is owed to the city must be paid in full by obtaining approval included but not limited to sewer water assessments and charges as well as real property taxes and anything else that a person may owe <laughs> to the city itself before this could be approved. Installation requirements, the all necessary piping has to be completed by a licensed plumber 
and must be located in an area protected from the outside elements. So this could not be an outside meter, has to be enclosed where it could be in the wintertime protected by heat. And I believe the, at least at this point, the uh, meter would be co-located with the existing meter in the, in the home or the business. Maintenance would be um, the sole fixtures in service to any of the um, connections to this meter would be the sole responsibility of the property owner so that any problems with that, they have to incur that cost. And then the rest of it, I think, is, is, is uh, self-containing, the temporary discontinuance. So if there's a water ban or any problems that way that the city has established, if you declare there's a water ban, then um, in essence, or actually if, if the commission does and then it's approved, uh, then they, have to, they would have to stop using the meter at that point. And then the last uh, uh, piece of this is tampering, and that talks about as it has in the past that you approved before, if you tamper with any meter, there are costs and uh, um, fines involved with that. Any questions on this? I have questions. Councilor, Councilor Dubois. Have you done any outside financial um, investigation on how this could actually increase the amount that the residents are paying on their water and sewer bills? Because I have. Increased? No, because what we're looking for in this, this is something that you don't have to do. You as, a, as an individual would be requesting to do it. Yes. So it's not you must. Yep. So the, I can't say to my knowledge. I'm going to ask um, Mr. Condon, but uh, before I do, I just wanted to make this pretty clear. I, last time this was up, I, I mentioned to my fellow counselors that there have been a lot of studies done that more or less say outside water meeting, meters are not only bad for conservation, which we have a lot of water, so maybe people don't want to conserve anymore. It's bad for conservation. In the end, it actually costs more money to the residential person using uh, the water meter. Because what is going to happen is every condo association and big user of um, gardening equipment, not me, I'm a big gardener, but we're talking huge corporate um, users of water are now not going to have to pay into the sewer system. That cost is a fixed cost. It's not going to go down because people no longer um, pay for the water that they put into the ground. That cost is going to be the same. And then it's going to be borne across all the ratepayers. So what we're doing is for me, who is a huge gardener and I water all the time and I do pay a big water bill, my first year, if I get on quick, I'm going to see a savings because I won't be paying, you know, for that for that wastewater use, usage that I'm not using. But over the long term, when all the big water users in the city go to outside metering, the, the cost for our wastewater is not going to go down because they no longer are paying into the pool of the cost. The cost is fixed. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to be losing people paying into the wastewater treatment system that are commercial users. And really the only reason we need such a major wastewater treatment system. And then who's going to pick up the extra cost? The residential payers are going to pick up the extra cost. And we're going to see this within three years. So some of us may still be on the city council and have to deal with, again, the, w the water and sewer um, departments coming back and saying we need to raise rates because all of a sudden a whole bunch of our income that we depended on is gone because every single major water user in the city has turned over to outside metering and is no longer paying in to support the sewer treatment system. And they're the only reason we have a major sewer treatment system. So have you put any thought into that? Has the committee talked about that real potential it's going to happen what i see from what you're stating is you're believing that if you pour water into your backyard that water that would have gone that you would have been charged for for the sewer plant okay is going to be a giant loss to the city and you're saying on the commercial level again this is for folks to take care of their landscaping. This is, has nothing to do with any of their commercial business. So if they're, they cannot use these meters for anything but basically landscaping, filling a pool, 
or possibly washing your car. Okay, that's the intention of this. So commercial business, excuse I'll, me. I'll name. Okay, so Chatham Westgate or um, Madrid Square. Will they be able to get outside water meters? They would be. They can put in an application for it if it's approved. Again, okay. it's for their landscaping. Yes, so they'll be able to get outside irrigation meters, as will every other major user of outside irrigation meters. And even though they are no longer paying into the wastewater treatment fee because they have outside water meters, that cost to operate the wastewater treatment system is not going to go down because we add water, secondary metering systems for water. That cost is going to remain the same. It's not going to go down based on how many outside water meters we get because it's irrelevant. But right now, the citizens of Brockton have the luxury of having Chateau West uh, Pine Estates, every single huge housing development that irrigates, they pay into the wastewater treatment costs. Once they're no longer paying into the wastewater treatment costs because their meters are now on irrigation, yeah. all that cost is not going to go down. It's all going to be there, and it's going to be borne by the residential taxpayer. So it, 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 it's not fair. I'm definitely going to be voting against this. At minimum, we should put it out to study. I'm not, you know, I, I, am, I am open to be wrong, but I've done a lot of research on this, and a lot of other municipalities have said it was a bad financial idea for the residential taxpayer, and I'm really concerned about it. Mr. Condon, do you have anything to add to this? May, may I may yes. answer your question before you call Mr. Condon up, please? Two things. One, whoever has water in this city still will be paying a sewer cost, period. Anybody who's looking for this meter is strictly looking for it, as I stated earlier, for irrigation purposes. And we included a couple of other things in with that. So we're talking a very small amount of money compared to what they're doing in their commercial business. It doesn't alleviate anyone who presently has a water meter to not pay sewer costs. Yes. Only thing it would do is if you have this meter and you're using it for irrigation purposes, that amount of water you would not pay sewer okay. costs for. So right now, Chateau Westgate, let's just use, I'm using made up numbers, and uses um, you know, 100,000 cubic gallons a quarter for just, these are made up numbers, made up numbers. I think that's a lot of water, but okay, okay. give me a different number. Give me any number you want to give me. 50, 50 cubic right, gallons of water. I, of exercise, this is 50. just for the exercise. Say 50 cubic gallons of water just for irrigation. They pay for water and sewer based on that 50 gallons of water that they're using just for irrigation. Under this new plan, Chateau Westgate will only be paying the water portion of that fee. They will not be paying the sewer portion of that fee. But our sewer costs are fixed, so we are more or less going to be just allowing them not to pay into that sewer cost, and who's going to have to pay that cost? The residential taxpayer is going to have to pay that cost. So the, the studies that I've read say the only, the, only, the only bodies that actually make an, a savings on this are the huge condominiums and huge uh, associations that do gigantic amounts of irrigation on a lot of land that the residential payer will save in the first and second year. But by subtracting out the requirement for the condominiums to pay into the sewer based on their water use, the cost for the sewer system is, is going to um, increase because the number of people paying into it is going to decrease and the number of people that are paying into it is going to be disproportionately single family homeowners so the single family homeowner is going to wind up paying for the sewer costs and subsidizing the cost that used to be borne by the condo associations we don't have to agree on it but i do want to know that you guys have actually looked into that i think what you're thinking again is that the individual homeowner wants this. If they sit down, figure out the cost involved for watering their lawn, maybe putting some water uh, to, to use for a car to wash, which is usually the summer months for most folks, and to top the pool a couple times during the year, would not be worth doing that if they do the math. Now, again, that's my personal opinion. But 
uh, this is the individual makes that choice. Again, any of the large commercial businesses in this city, unless they're running a farm, and there are still f few farms and, and places that grow flowers, et cetera, and sell those on a commercial basis, they are the few that would be involved with that. And it's very few compared to what it used to be in this city. But the individuals, most of them, I believe, when they look at the total cost of what they have to put out for this, I don't believe they're going to go ahead and do it. Because if they sit down and do the math, they will see. So what you're but saying, but one other it. thing, please, it was never said there was going to be a savings. That wasn't the point. The point was they were citizens that came to the Water Commission requesting this because they'd seen and heard this from other places. We did not say to them, this is what we want to do. We didn't twist their arm. We didn't say, you're going to save some money. We didn't say to the city, you're going to save some money. This was something that was requested of us. And we said, yes, we can go ahead and take a look at this. And this is what you have. But you recommended it favorably. We're, we're, so yes, are, we are, you because are we're trying to, in essence, listen to the folks out there who are requesting this. So you've taken a position, the Water Commission, that, that you're in favor of this, even though it may, in the end, cost the residential rate payer more money. And the only people, in your estimation, that are going to take advantage of it are not going to be the single-family homeowners. They're going to be the condo associations. So it seems like we're more or less subsidizing the condo associations associations at the single family homeowners expense I and think, I, I don't think want to do that I think what you're doing is looking at something that's extremely large I mean the, most of the condos that I'm aware of around this city and the large houses and even the commercial businesses around the city when I say houses I'm talking about the commercial housing not single houses doesn't have that much landscaping that that's going to be the kind of situation you're talking about did you look into that did you graph it out? Did you? Did you I haven't did graphed you? it out. I'm familiar with not every place, but around the city, I'm pretty familiar. And I can't think of anybody other than our park that has that kind of Chateau land Westgate, around of it. They have um, land, Pine yes. Street, Pine Estates, there are a lot of them. I can name them. But what I'm saying is I feel like this may not have been really thoroughly reviewed. And if people haven't looked at the studies that other communities have done around the unforeseen costs that are borne by the single-family ratepayer, I think that's a problem. Before you come up, Mr. Rowley, I would just like um, Mr. Condon to come up. And I just want to ask him if he has done his financial analysis of this. Because when I was asking for residents to get a tax abatements, um, um, and abatements of their water bills, it was very difficult for you to kind of project out what kind of savings that was going to mean, and you wouldn't certify it. How is this at all different? Because in the end, we're going to have to wind up raising wastewater treatment costs based on these condo associations opting out of paying the, what I see as their fair share. What do you, how do you see it? Well, I, I think you make a good point. I think there is probably, if this is adopted and the City Council approves it, there's probably going to be a revenue increase to the water system, and the water system needs the money because they'll be selling now uh, for homeowners probably who weren't using the water before and now will put these meters in. But you're correct, on the opposite side of that, there will be probably a loss of revenue to the sewer system. What I don't know is what the impact in this particular city would be. The Commission has studied what the impact was in the town of or the city of Taunton, and it was about $50,000 uh, there. So you, that's a little bit smaller city. It'll be, and I don't know whether they have the same number of uh, uh, facilities like we have, the condominium kind of facilities that we have. I will say, though, that for a lot of the commercial entities that use water in their production cost, uh, they're already getting a discount yes. for the sewer. So this is outside usage, mm -hmm. as you said, for pools and uh, irrigation for landscaping. I don't know what the other side of it so would be. So if it was more, say, 50000 more, 80000 more, how much more would that be borne across the single-family well, home Well, the rate? sewer system is at the present in a better position than the water system. It's got several million dollars more in revenues. It's got a little bit more expense, but it also has several million dollars in revenues. I think we worked together a few years ago with the consent decree to try to get those sewer rates to a level where it could support that. So it's generating a surplus each year, which gets reapplied in capital spending. So the loss of several hundred thousand dollars even I don't think would badly affect the sewer system at this time so over do you five think or six it's years fiscally maybe. wise to um, subsidize um, people wasting um, uh, condo associations more or less just wasting water into the ground I w is that really how we want to spend the 
sewer system surplus. I have streets in Ward mm -hmm. 6 that need their pipes fixed. Yep. I still, even on Mr. Jordan Street, there's an interceptor that comes up in this disgusting solid waste that comes out like once every three years when it gets overloaded. Right. So, I mean, this stuff still happens. So yep. if we have extra money, I want them to be fixing sewer interceptors. I don't want us to be giving um, cuts and costs to condo associations. Uh, do you I understand think, what I'm saying? I do understand what you're saying. I okay. think your, your point is well taken there. So the, the, the question to me comes down to not so much financial because on like an $18 million budget, several hundred thousand dollars isn't going to drive it one way or the other. And if you wanted to make up the revenue, you could probably do it by how you structured the rate on the block rate system. I mean, that, that that's one way to to fix the problem. If you think that the loss is occurring in, in the upper rate blocks, then you fix it by increasing those rates and not having the, the residential people subsidize it. The issue of whether that's the best use of those revenues is to reduce sewer uh, revenues from outside watering by uh, commercial users. I think, you know, when you've got a lot of other work to do, you can make a case about that. I don't think the Water Commission is making this decision on that basis. What they're trying to do, I think, is to allow um, more water sales to our residential users so that they won't be in a higher rate block by using it in, in, for the sewer purposes. So I think the water system would benefit the sewer system a little bit of loss. Do you think that this could be um, something that you could study in more detail over um, a couple months and come up with a definitive well, number on how that might affect us? Yes, we'd, ha we we'd, have to, we'd have to make some assumptions as to what would be going on in all those different, we all know, as you said, we all know where those, uh, where those uh, facilities are. The, and a lot of them are on the west side. We'd have to take a look at what their present water usage is. I don't, I don't know what that is. We could probably make, a, make an assumption about it. it. It wasn't brought through my office, so that doesn't exist right now. Thank you. And I have a question for Mr. Rowley that might just solve my whole problem. Mr. Rowley, do you, could we restrict these outside water meters to single family home hookups? Yes, we could. Okay. And uh, Mr. Mr. Attorney Nassarella, do you see restricting these type of outside water metering hookups as some kind of violation of the, like the, con the uh, condo association's rights? Could we do, could we restrict this ordinance just for single family home hookups to start even just for the first five years or something? I haven't examined that as to whether or not it would be discriminatory against the single family or condo association. Um, and I'd have to know if all things are being equal. It's an issue I could study and I could get back to you on that. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry that I've monopolized this, but I feel passionately about it and I'm gonna open up, I'm gonna be done, Mr. Chairman. And I just ask that um, at the end of this, maybe we postpone this for three months so Mr. Condon and Attorney Nessarella can get together and come up with a plan that hopefully we could just offer this to single family home hookups. So thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Stewart. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, Mr. Jordan, a couple questions. And actually, um, Councilor Dubois had addressed some of my concerns. I'm in favor of this and actually had a conversation with my colleagues in Cambridge who brought up a similar issue. Um, but in terms of revenue, not loss of revenue on the sewer side, potentially. But um, I, a, I have a, a concern about equity. I, I'm concerned that we would have, that we're charging individuals for water with the assumption that that water is also being discharged into the sewer system. Uh, that's one concern I have in terms of equity uh, and versus reality. The second concern is that we have businesses that have exemptions to that policy. So we already have large businesses that are being charged fairly and residents are not. Uh, and then to possibly create another tiered system where single family homes are treated differently than condo users but yet businesses, large businesses still have that option. So the only group of individuals who uh, are treated less fairly are individuals who own condos, which are essentially are, they're single family homes if you pay a mortgage on a condo. So, but I think um, what I fully agree with, with Council of the Bois is that there needs to be some study done for us to assess the impact of this, this ordinance in terms of loss of revenue versus the gain of revenue. Uh, and when you guys put that assessment together, I think all sort of scenarios should be placed on the table, including you know, the idea of um, you know, different rules and regulations for different types of people. Um, but I think what we want to do is have everyone treated fairly. So if large businesses have an exemption, then it seems that condo associations, as well as single family home, homeowners should have that same exemption, or maybe perhaps you know, no one has that exemption. Um, so I'm assuming whatever study that you come up with will have us look at those different 
scenarios in terms of who or who doesn't uh, benefit from this new ordinate, ordinance? There's just a slight little problem here with this, if I may remind the council. The Water Commission only deals with water. Sewer is a totally separate. It's an, under Mr. Rowley. Now, grant you, it's under the same department. Right. We can work together, but just making that clear on what the commission itself does versus what the overall piece we're talking about. And in no way are we trying to be discriminatory to anybody in the city. Uh, and again, I'll, I'll repeat what I said earlier. Individuals brought this to us. We did not take it out. We did not grab it from someplace and say, let's do this. There were individuals that came to us and requested that. So we followed up with that. We're just presenting that to you folks, basically. Yeah, I do think Council Law is right, though. So I can understand the residents coming to you, but you know, the commission, and I don't know if we that request us uh, a specific request from the body to have you guys work together on this. But I do, I do think that doing an analysis of what's gained and what's lost right. and then presenting that to the council is pretty important. We can do that, I'm sure. So. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Rodriguez and, and Councilor Cruz. Councilor? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Jordan, good evening. Good evening. Uh, I want to echo the same um, <clears throat> concerns that Councilor Dubois actually has, uh, with one exception, because uh, we do have individuals in this community that own two family homes. You know, not just single family homes, but smaller, you know, two family where one, you know, the person lives on the first floor and rents the second floor. Plenty of those in the community as well, as well as triple deckers that actually are home owned. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, if we're going to look into that, I think that, you know, it has to go, you know, full play or then it shouldn't be go, it shouldn't go anywhere. But one of the concerns that I actually have is that you did mention something about tempering with the meters. Correct. But what's to prevent somebody from bypassing? And, I, and I'll tell you why. Because most homes actually have a, um, a faucet somewhere around that main line that once the water goes through the meter and it has a shut off and then there's a, another faucet that sometimes you can use for basement work or whatever you need to do. What's to prevent me from grabbing a small hose from your meter, bypassing it, into the main line of the home and utilizing the now all of a sudden I go with the same concerns that Councilor Dubois has in terms of paying absolutely close to nothing in sewer because because if I and I'm not tampering with the meter I'm just bypassing do you understand, understand what I'm saying I understand and and if we have any mechanism in place that would actually kind of work to prevent that from happening, because I see that now uh, as a serious issue in this community, because I can just see people who are watching us at home right now thinking about this, because it would make sense. We have thought of that, and thanks to our new system, that's not too easy to do, okay? Our system reads constantly, 24 hours a day. If you have a leak in your house, we know it probably before you do. We also, after a certain period of time, will notify you about this. We'll have two separate meters giving us the same kind of readings because that second meter, the so-called irrigation or outside meter, although technically outside I think is a bad word because we don't want it outside. We want it someplace where it's going to stay warm so it wouldn't be able to freeze and cause problems in the, in the wintertime. But that meter would also read just the way your regular house meter reads. So between the two, we, don't, we will know what water is going through we'll be able to calculate that instantaneously with the existing system we have now, because the system now, immediately as you use water, we know that how much you're using and where, how long, et cetera. So that's the piece as far as somebody tampering the way that you're talking about. Now, if they tamper on the very front end of the meter before it goes through any meters, that's something no. we'll know too, that's simply no. because the lack of, if you were two, three, one, whatever number of people you have in your household, and all of a sudden it goes down, the meter tells us that also, just by the readings. So we look and see, why does this happen? If it happens for too long a period, again, that'd be something we'd be investigating, send one of our people out to take a look to see what's going on. I know, but I think what you are actually are, are doing here is taxing the system a lot more than it already is taxed. I mean, we don't have enough bodies to do the work on a regular basis. Now you're gonna have people going down and checking to see 
if I bypass the meter to use to take a shower or if I'm using the hose outside washing a third car. You see? Because what I'm saying to you is that this is the meter and beyond the meter there's usually a nozzle, a faucet or something that's actually attached to it. You could actually grab a hose and hook that up beyond your meter. Your meter wouldn't run. I didn't touch the meter. I'm just saying I hooked it right into the line of the home utilizing, utilizing the, the water meter from the outside to do inside uh, whatever I need to do on the inside of the house. So you couldn't tell that because otherwise you're going to be sending somebody over the house every time. Uh, I, well, how, how can you tell the difference between me watering my lawn and uh, filling out a small swimming pool in the back? The history we have of your records for X amount of years on how much water you're using is part of what we'd be utilizing, okay? That gives us some since we put the new system in. Again, you have some history. If you start doing that, it will show there's a difference in the water. If it's significant, and then we have to define what that means, we then would know that you're doing this. Now, absolute yeah, there's no way to be sure as an absolute if somebody was able to do that. It would take a little while for that to be detected and then dealt with. But there's, there's a system in place. Tampering in any part of the system is within this piece and other uh, regulations that we have that were passed, I think it was a couple of years ago, to, to handle this kind of a situation. If somebody starts playing around, trying to bypass, or however you want to figure it, with water. Okay, so it's, it's, it's there. Um, and yeah, people can get creative. But at the same time, while they're getting creative, again, we've got a system that can read pretty much what's happening. And as long as our system's functioning and your meters are functioning correctly, they're kicking back to us on a 24-hour basis what hollow water is coming into your house, we will know. We also have, which is interesting, believe it or not, even down your street, or an area that you live in, like when we have a fire. Those are hydrants that are being used. Those aren't metered directly that we would pick that way, but we pick them off, off our larger meters. So we're, we're pretty much not down to the finest drop, but we have a good idea on when water's being used improperly or we have a leak, et cetera, and that's when we further go out to investigate these kinds of things. That's what your system's doing. But frankly, uh, Mr. Jordan, I don't think it's... Uh the hassle and the issues that it's going to create. I don't think the benefits are there to benefit the handful of people that this proposal is actually going to benefit. And this is something, to be honest with you, I mean, knowing the facts that we currently have, there's no way I can support something like that as we stand. I mean, later on, if somebody comes down and says, you know, this is the way it is, the numbers are this, the numbers are that, as, as we had talked about, I can understand of changing my mind, but as it stands right now, I think this is actually something that's going to op open up a, a can of worms. Um, we're going to sit here and decide who gets it, who doesn't get it, who gets to, and we know how things operate in the city sometimes. You know, why is Joe A getting approved and Joe B not getting approved, and then and who, how do we go through the whole process of appeals and all this other stuff? I don't think it's worth the, uh, the hassle, to be honest with you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, thank you. Councilor. Councilor Cruz. Thank you. Uh, in, I'm in favor of this in principle. I've had many homeowners call me through the last few years, and I was somebody that pushed it forward. But I do have some questions. Uh, I think maybe Mr. Raleigh in particular, and go to how this would work. And again, I think it goes to some of your concerns. And being in the plumbing, plumbing industry, I can tell you that when people want to tamper, I've seen some f funky ways they can do it, but it has nothing to do with what we're talking about tonight. They do it now. But we, nowadays, we can tell better. Um, so we're talking about, because I think there's either I'm confused or some, some other people are confused. You come in, we apply for this, I put the meter in. It then is connected to, when we say outside, to an outside hosecock, correct? Yes. This and that's what you'd inspect, and I assume that's kind of what the annual fee is for, so you can go take a look and make sure that's all that's on there. Correct. So it's connected to the outside, outside spigot, Somebody wants to water their lawn, water their bushes, fill a pool. Fill a pool. Wash their car. And I mean, I do think it's a little bit of fairness. I have had people through the years say, why should I be paying for sewer costs for that? And I guess what uh, Councilor Dubois' thoughts are 
correct on this. I think, though, that it's probably we're going to find out um, that it's not going to be as dramatic as let's use those numbers we we're talking about. So let's say one of the condo associations is using 100, you know, to use a number, 100 cubic feet of, of water. Do you have any idea of, generally speaking, what then goes, what is used for outside, outside use, 10%, 5%? With, in a condo unit now? Uh, well, in a... Uh, because they... It, yeah, I guess... If they guess. are doing it, which I don't believe they are right now, um, I don't know. It, it depends on the grounds. But I think, and, and I know what Councilor Dubois is talking about is, but I believe that it will stay where it is now with these condo units, but we'll give them that extra meter to, the, to do their outside ground. So I don't think we're going to lose anything on the sewer. We'll gain on the water. But right now, so let's say... Right now. But, so I get, but in theory, I know what Councilor Dubois is saying. So right now, uh, right, right now, let's say they use 100 gallons a day to water their, their yard. That's 100 gallons of water that we then don't apply against the sewer rate. Is Correct. The question. Correct. And I guess, I guess my thought is I think we're going to find out, and I do think we're at, if we were at the beginning of the spring, I'd be pushing not to table this tonight, because, but now we're at the point where we're pretty much through another season anyways, so it is worth taking the extra time to try to come up with those numbers, because it's really a summertime, summertime thing we're talking it about. Is. Spring, it is. You know, spring and, and early summer is the time we're talking about. So at this point, it will make some sense to, to table it and try and get harder numbers. But generally speaking, I mean... My guess is it's, it's going to be 2, 3, 4 percent of, the, of their water that, is, that, well, that gets we, used. We did reach out. I did reach out to the, to the city of Taunton, and they have approximately 16,000 customers. We have 23,000. Okay. They have approximately 50 reduction meters in place right now. They have, um, they, they collect approximately a $10 million a year. Out of that $10 million, 50000 came from the reduction meters. So, I, and I believe Do you this, know when the city they of Taunton is similar to Brockton as far as condos and residentials and industrial. Yeah, actually, they probably and, have more condos, but And, yeah. and to, to answer um, Councilor Rodriguez's question is, <clears throat> this meter is going after the household meter. So you have your, you have your house meter, then you're going to come off of that or tee off of that with your outside meter. So it would be very hard to tamper with. So what would you actually do then? Subtract? You'd actually have to read the first meter and then subtract yeah, the, so the reduction Yeah, so it's more like meter. a reduction meter. That's okay. more or less what we can call We call it a deduct meter. Okay. It's a little bit more work for the clerks um, to do it that way, but we'd set it up as water, a water account only. Okay. Because I do have, you know, I do have... I mean, and, and many I homeowners, I don't know what that constitutes, but I, I've had 20 or 25 people through the first, last couple of years, you know, really upset with what they use for, mm -hmm. you know, their gardeners and what they use outdoors and, and you know, having to pay sewer for it. Um, and then the only other thing I'd say about that is condominium owners are single, home, single family homeowners too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in most of those units, you know, I don't think, again, I think it's a good idea to try to get a, a grasp on it, but uh, I don't think we're going to find that the, the amount of water they're using is is a spectacular amount, and they may not fund the, the amount of money to pay well, for it. It's also the cost. It's $105 for meter, and then it could cost anywhere from 300 to 600 to get a licensed plumber in there to, to, to plumb it in the right way. Right. So it is quite an expense to do. And there was an article in the Enterprise mentioned a $250 fee or something. What's that about? I didn't see that article, but... Okay, so that's not an annual fee that we're looking for. That you think, Brian, that's the cost of the. Okay. Well, the meat is 100, 105. Okay, I didn't see that. Or 250. I, I, don't, okay. I didn't see that. And I didn't see it either, but I got an email about it. Too. I didn't see that cost. So I am in favor of this, but I think it will be a good idea to table it tonight and try and get a better handle on the amount of money, but I think we're going to find that it's uh, not a huge amount. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank all. you. Thank you, Councilor Cruz. Councilor Azak. Good evening, Mr. Jordan. Good evening. Um, actually, 
Uh, Mr. Raleigh just answered part of my question, the cost of the actual meter. What, <clears throat> what are we looking at as far as cost goes per individual household for each um, resident? The meter itself? The meter, but I believe in the beginning you went over that um, if, it, if there's a problem with the meter, all repairs are to be done by the This is correct. All, any cost involving this meter would be borne by the person who requested the meter, whether it be commercial business or private residence. What does it usually cost to repair one of these meters? It probably would be replacement more than repair in most cases. And the point, I don't know, what, what are the points going for now? The, uh, the reading device. So 130. So 130. 105. Okay, so you're talking so 100, so 250, the same but cost. those aren't something that you would expect to go out. Okay, you could say something could be defective, but as far as it, going bad, it should have a 10 year life or at least, at least that or more, uh, given individuals want to do this. Now that's not the plumbing cost. And again, it has to be a certified licensed plumber, okay, to put this in. And again, we put, um, they have to do some plumbing in the house to do that. And then we, the, the water department would actually put the meter in. If there's any additional plumbing, the uh, fittings or what have you, that also would be added as a cost. It would be probably nominal compared to everything else, but that would be an uh, additional cost to it. So, so, so we're not um, we're not actually going out and installing them. You're recommending that the homeowners that request these meters bring in a licensed plumber to install them. They wouldn't install them. They'd have to do some uh, adaptation to the pipes so that this could be done. Okay, that's the piece <clears throat> that they would have to do, and they would have to buy the meter itself. And again, that has to be. Uh, a, a certified meter or the meters that we use basically along with the same readers that we use so there's no problem that way okay and um, and they're going they'll be read electronically the same way that the new meters are like correct it would not have to have uh, anybody to come it would be a electronic reading picked up I'm assuming we want it also on the same system with some kind of a frequency Different, so you have the two different frequencies to pick it up. That, that was my other question. How do right. you differentiate right. which would meter be a different is frequency which... to do that? So, okay, and then um, backflow prevention. That's a a valve that prevents, and it's it's on a lot of things in your house already. Your furnace, in some cases, and some other things possibly that prevents water that possibly could be somehow get contaminated to go back into. The, the water system, the regular water system. So if for some reason, if some kind of a vacuum occurred in the water system and it pulled water back, your backflow would shut that and stop it, anything from coming from the house, going back out, let's say, to the street or along those lines. That's what the backflow is there. And do they need any permits or is there any specific permits that the residents would need to get these meters installed? The annual What's it the ten dollar fee. Uh, the ten dollar fee. I'm not sure if there was a license or. Hold on one second, please. Uh, application fee. It is. It's That's what it is. Annual application. So there's no like plumbing permit or anything that's no. needed. No. Well, that would be. The licensed plumber, I think the answer to that would be yes, and I'm guessing on that, but when you're doing that kind of work and it's, it's involving your main system, you'd probably have to get a permit to do that. From okay, the so. Um, and how do you feel if we um, postpone this or till we, we get some more information? What do you think? I think what was made as far as the, the assessment on when this would be used again would be next spring. Again, our recommendation is because individuals have brought it to us, so we're bringing it to you. It's not that we're saying, yeah, we want to do this, it's great, you know, that kind of thing. That's not where we're coming from. We're just presenting something that was presented to us from our residents, period. So we have to, we can't do it on our own, we have to bring it to you, and that's what we're doing. So if you decide, as a council, you, don't, you think it's not something that this city should have, that ends it. No, and I appreciate that, and I think that's what we're about when residents ask things, that this is what we're, we're here for, is to look into them. But um, how would you let the residents know about this new program besides hearing it here? How, would you send it out with their water bills, or how would you let them know about? Yeah, we would have to do some kind of a, a marketing, and that's probably the easiest way. That's what's been done in the past. I don't know if that's still the most efficient or the most expedient in the... Um, 
don't want to say cheapest, what's the most, the most frugal way of doing it, okay, then, yeah, whatever it is, that's what we'll do to make sure that all residents are aware of it. And businesses, just anybody that could be involved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Councilor. Councilor DiNapoli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Jordan, good evening. Yes, sir. Um, do you... Do you know what the water usage is from May to October versus October to when, when the end you say of you, April? You mean, you mean the commission on the water department? Right. I mean, yes, we, does, we, the, we would does, know that. Does it? Does the water? Uh, is it a third more that we uh, pump? I I can't say that off the top of my head, but it's I would say it's a significant increase from what we do during the uh, winter months. No question well, it, on that. Of course it would be because people are going to fill up their right. pools. Right, well, pools, and they're they're not even so garden. much that, just the watering, uh, just general things that people do. Because you talk pools, you see more little kiddie pools than you do full swimming pools, I think, in this city at this point. I'm, I'm going to give you water. I'm going to give you an example in, to the rest of the fellow councillors on I am in favor of this, okay? I think this is a great idea. I have a couple of neighbors that have beautiful lawns. They have an irrigation system in, and they... They water their lawn at 5 o'clock in the morning. You come down my street, it looks better than a golf course, okay? <laughs> and the neighbors come over to me and say to me, my water bill was $1,100 in the quarter because they're using water, right? Right. And is there any way that we could save on the charges and whatnot? Now, I don't, I, I have a brook in my backyard, and my, my good Italian buddy next door to me showed me how to pump the water out of the brook to water my grass. I have nice green grass, right. okay? I think this is a great idea because there are people that don't want to have a, a $1,000 water bill in the summertime with a beautiful lawn. I mean, there aren't many. Like you said, Taunton only has, a, what, 50, 60 meters out there? I don't, know, I don't expect Brockton to have four or 500 of these meters out there. I mean, some people couldn't afford the cost. They could they don't even afford the cost of the water. But, you know, I, I think it's a great idea, but what we have to do is make sure that we do it and we do it in the correct manner. We have no problem with that. So, you know, I mean, I, I don't know if they're going to table this, uh, but I'd like to see it move forward for, for next year so the poor people that are paying a high cost of water just to water their lawn and garden are not paying a, 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 an exorbitant amount of water because people out there that are listening, the more water you use, the higher the rate. Is that correct? Right? Correct. <clears throat> okay. I would hope that no later than March of next year we would have this resolve, however, up, <clears throat> down, in between, whatever we do to it. The so way that, we do business, Ozzy, it'll be 2015 well, that may be plus true. 10 <laughs> years on it. It's a but simple, no, next year would be nice if we, we could implement it. It shouldn't take that long for us to do this. That's why I but. said 2,000, but add 10. We're, okay, thank you very much. Thank you, thank Mr. You. Chairman. And, you, and your neighbor will have a new sister, but you'll still use the brook. I am, yeah. I, okay. I, I just want to make sure. Oh, right. So write to me, I'll tell you how to do it. Council Dubois. Great. I just want to make a couple more statements, then I'll postpone. So the county of Michigan. Washtenaw does these. And the cost for a residential irrigation meter in Michigan is $465. And so right there, I mean, what subsidy are we going to subsidize folks that want an outside water meter if ours are magically only $150? And this county out in Michigan, where everything's cheaper in the Midwest, is charging $465. So I have worries even about the cost of the meters now. And my background with the water department is that one of my residents got a $100,000 water bill and was told that it was her tree that drank the water. And then the city <laughs> leaned that onto her property tax. And for two years, she was in and out of the hospital with high blood pressure because she was worried about losing her house. <laughs> But that's my background with the water <coughs> department. So I'm worried about the $150 water meter because other communities are paying, are charging $465. I'm worried that that means you guys didn't look into it very well. I'm worried that in the end, it's gonna cost people more money and that hasn't been <coughs> reviewed. And I care about water conservation <coughs> and I'm nervous about that as well. And I know the, the neighbors that Mr. DiNapoli is talking about because I love their garden. And so, and their grass is awesome and I want it. So if we can figure out a way to make it owner occupied, I'm okay with that. 
But condo associations, as I understand it, each unit is supposed to be individually metered. So if your unit is individually metered, it's the condo association as a whole that's going to be paying for that water use. And then it will be up to the condo association if they want to spend that much money. Because the lot that Mr. DiNapoli is talking about, Councilor DiNapoli, is like, I can't, even, I can't even think of the fraction of the size it is compared to uh, Chateau Westgate. So if they're paying $1,000 for the summer month quarter, Chateau Westgate must be spending a heck of a lot more. So I just am really, I appreciate you bringing this forward because I have residents that call me about the water metering issue. And even my husband talks about it sometimes. But the idea for use of fraudulent use of the water is a concern because I lived in an apartment where everybody shared cable. And I didn't hook it up, and it was many years ago, but everybody p shared cable. And it was like six different apartments. So if I know people that were doing that, <laughs> God knows they'll be doing something around the water bill. And so it just has to be reviewed more because if we can figure out a way to help homeowners and people that are invested in here, I'm all for it. But if this is going to be another scheme to help the businesses scheme. at the disadvantage of the homeowners, I don't know how we could approve it. But so at this time, I'd like to postpone it for three uh, months. There's a couple other councils that have to speak, and, then we'll, go and then we'll go back. So to I that. can't postpone it again because this is my last time speaking on the subject matter. So if someone else that speaks on it would be so kind as to postpone it, so we could have Attorney Nessarella and Mr. Oh. Condon meet, have a meeting of the minds, and come up with some plan around if it's a. Uh, prejudice to one type of um, homeowner with one type of hookup opposed to another type of homeowner with a different type of hookup to restrict access to the meter, um, the irrigation meters to one class of owner-occupied people. Um, and then have Mr. Condon do his magic around projecting how much Council this is Mortons. actually going to cost the system. I would appreciate Council, it. We're hearing you. Okay. Great. <clears throat> appreciate it. Councilor Moynihan. Who else wants to speak on this? <laughs> I think we asked everything. Is this supposed to go to ordinance? I'm I mean, if it's, if it's an ordinance, it's going to go to ordinance. Well, I don't know. It's, it, it, it's, only, it's here as an order, so I don't know if it really right has now. to go to It may have to no, go to an ordinance. Order. That may huh? be something we have it's to order. Well, if, if it is an ordinance, why don't we send it to ordinance and we can get all these questions answered. We'd have to bring people like everything Council DuBois wants to ask and what we all want to know and the cost, what have you. Point of information, I don't believe this would need to go to ordinance. I don't think it does. It does. We're just okay. approving well, we a, rule of the, oh. a rule of the water commission. Right. I, okay. I believe you're, you're correct, Councilor, so it wouldn't have to go to ordinance. So it's not an ordinance. So I think you'd be right at the point to postpone and let it come back to the council with all information that's needed. I mean, I, I can't disagree with some of the comments that have been made. I think we need some other Right. Because really if she can't postpone it, I'll postpone. I'll make a motion to postpone and ask these questions. Is, did somebody else have something to ask? Second. Yes. Councilor Bonds yes. hasn't had a chance yet. Thank so you. Really quickly. Councilor. I've seconded that motion. All right. I didn't, I didn't hear that, Councilor. <clears throat> I second on the motion. The question would be on the motion. Okay, on the motion, can I ask? On, on the motion. Okay. Thank you. Um, Sorry, Councilor. Um, um, Mr. Jordan, the meters, the additional meters, will they be new meters that the city will have to get into a 20-year contract to use, or will they be something that we already have that we can convert into making sure that there are these, um, these irrigation meters? How is that going to work, the equipment? The equipment itself would be purchased by the individual. The city itself won't be buying meters or have stock, at least at this point, the plan was not to have meters stocked or kept right. uh, for people to purchase. They would have to purchase them themselves. So I, I'd have to go out my them, own self and find a place that has these right, but special meters. Right, but we those places that, of the meters that will be accepted to us or for us, for the, for the water department. And then you would go to X place and go ahead and buy that yourself. Okay, okay. so it wouldn't be an automatic company that we have a contract with that the residents of Brockton would have to purchase these particular meters from? No, in, unless the only piece might be that reading meter. I don't know if, we, if there's only one company that makes those or it has to be, let's say, the exact same reader. That's something I don't have an answer to. Okay, but other right. than that, that it's, it, again, that's one of those situations that you'd want because we don't want 
if we want to just have another frequency, we can use everything we have and not have to build a whole new system. Right. That's the point for using something within the same frequency, not the same, but additional frequency within proximity. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Council. So, Co Council Moynihan. Uh, on, on the motion, uh, Mr. Chairman. Council Rodriguez, on the motion, and back to Council Moynihan. Go ahead. Are we, um, are we looking, because to me, the, uh, what came out of Councilor Dubois was for these individuals to get together to come up with the, uh, with the game plan on this thing before it comes back in front of us. Uh, by postponing it, are you postponing it to the next no. uh, financial council or down the road in a way with some sort November. of a specific date? November, into November, so okay. that they have ample time to come back before the council with, a, a, as I call it, appropriate presentation so that we all understand Correct. what we're doing here. That's okay. the way I look at it, okay? okay. So, Council Monahan. So the motion will be. The motion was made in second, right. so the motion. To the first finance in November. In November. All, right. all in favor? Opposed? Comes back to us in uh, the first finance committee meeting in November. Thank you. Thank you, councilors. Excellent. Item number nine. <clears throat> Madam Chair. Order, Mass General Law Chapter 258, Section 13 provides for <coughs> by local acceptance indemnification of municipal officers elected or appointed from personal financial loss and expense, including reasonable legal fees and costs, if any, in an amount not to exceed $1 million. Invited Philip C. Nazarella, City Solicitor. Good evening. I'm not sure what Councilor may have sent this uh, because it's not signed here, Madam. Clark, you have nothing signed, correct? So I'm just, I'm just curious to see which councilor did. Uh... Which one is it? Oh, I hit the wrong one. Yeah. <coughs> what number? Eleven. Oh no, I'm sorry. It isn't. Nine. Nothing. No, I don't see anything. Okay. Well, in any case. Good evening, uh, Mr. Good evening. Attorney Nazarella. How are you? Good, thank you. So I'm not, uh, if you want to make a presentation, I'm, I'm you know, left at a stump here because I'm not sure what council filed it. Um, any questions the council's have in regards to it? I'm not sure how it, it's unusual that something got here without not somebody knowing anything about it. Is this council do what? But, Mr. Mr. Chairperson, I, I'll ask a question. Was it? Postponed some time ago. Question, Council. Yeah. Uh, what point of information? Yeah. Council Mr. Mr. Solicitor. Yes, sir. Presently, our elected officials are indemnified for any amount, at all. If I'm to be sued personally, do I have city indemnification? Do I have to get my own attorney? Give me a scenario. Give me the what happens. Okay. Well, historically, if a, a sitting official appointed or elected, is sued in a civil lawsuit for actions and conduct within the scope of their authority or duty. The city has historically covered their legal fees and indemnified for any loss. And that is, if, if the official has acted in good faith, I would. Within the scope of their authority, which would be defined as in good faith. Thank you very much. That's all I have, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Any other questions? Mr. Chairperson, Stewart. i like to have this uh, actually postponed to identify who submitted the um, request. Second. Second. Motion's been made and seconded <clears throat> that we postpone to the next finance meeting. Yeah. Yes. yes. To the next meeting of October the 6th. All in favor? Yeah. Opposed? Postpone she, until she the she October 6th finance meeting. I think thank you. Madam, I will. Um, I'll, I'll Mr. Chairman, I may say uh, <clears throat> October 6th, I know I am pre-engaged that particular evening. Then why don't we move it to the second finance meeting, um, which would be the fall and date doesn't the hit 20, me. 20 something, 20. I think 20. it would be 20. Why don't we do it that to the second finance meeting in October, October 20th. I Does appreciate that. Work for you? that. Thank, Thank you, you Mr. Yeah. Attorney. Now we're on item number, uh, um, excuse me, number 10. Order that the City Council of the City of Brockton petitions the Great and General Court under the provisions of Section 8 of Article 89 of the Amendments to the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for an act as follows. 
an act providing for rent regulations and the control of evictions in manufactured housing and mobile home communities in the city of Brockton. Invited Philip Nazarella, Attorney City Solicitor. Good evening, Mr. Nazarella. Good evening, Mr. Nazarella. Councilor Stadinsky, I know Councilor Stadinsky. That is mine. Yes. Thank Councilor? you, Mr. Chairman. Go right ahead. Mr. Nazarella, we had made this request in particular the Skyview property. The people down there uh, are hurt by the yearly increases, and uh, they knew about the case in Easton. So they've asked us to go to the Great and General Court and to get permission to have this type of rent control. Do you feel that that would be all right? Well, uh, it's a general question. I don't. I assume you may be asking me relative to the legality Correct. of um, the Home Rule Amendment. They, they, there is a legality to that. There, to me, are some vague issues regarding this. And I, pardon me, but I had read this without really understanding what the council was looking for. If it was simply the legality, because I assume it may have passed through your legislative council as well, who. Usually he and I will speak, uh, and I chime in on what I think about it. What concerns me about the way this is written when we talk about regulations in contr and control of evictions, I'm not certain what those regulations are and what type of control they are looking to pass. That would be what I would focus on when we talk about legality, fair and equitable, things of that nature, because uh, traditionally, in rent control, whether it, had been, whether it had been in Brookline or other local communities, the pendulum has a tendency to swing far to the other direction and put an in inordinate burden oftentimes on the landlord uh, in, tr in an attempt to give some fairness and equity to the tenant. So without knowing the specificity of what the regulations are or the control that you are looking on, evictions in are you increasing the burden one has to go through to uh, formulate and process an eviction uh, i'm short on that knowledge right now and if i know that i would be better to uh, give opinion on whether or not it's legal and could sustain passage well i would i'll be happy to look into that further or speak to the author of this <clears throat> if there is a, a template or if there's more literature on it we'll be happy to examine it <clears throat> Thank you very much. Thank you. All set, Councillor? I am. Okay. Councillor Stewart? No, I'm fine. So Follow are up? we suggesting that this is postponed until that review happens, Councillor? I, I would agree with this year. Okay. Yeah. Motion to, uh, motion's been made and second to, to, to postpone next finance meeting or? Um, I'm going to ask the solicitor, how much time would you need? Well, I'll, I'll be prepared in the one in October. Uh, so while we do it, well, Councillor Ian Erie stated. For your knowledge, the case was on TV tonight, the Eastern end of it so it's something we should get working on i think i uh, will look today into is it. the seniors on fixed incomes mm -hmm. who came to me and really being hurt so thank you okay thank you. motion's been made and second we postpone it to the second finance meeting in october all in favor opposed so be thank you uh, thank you counselor thank you, thank you mr attorney uh item number 11 madam clerk order that the city council authorizes the mayor to enter into the Intermunicipal agreement between the town of Abington and the city of Brockton for transport and treatment of wastewater from Abington and transmission. This agreement is intended to supersede and replace the current agreement between the parties. Invited Honorable <coughs> Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conn, Chief Financial Officer, Larry Rowley, Acting Commissioner of DPW, David Norton, Contract Administrator, Philip Nazarella, City Solicitor, Christopher Petrini, Esquire Petrini and Associates, PC, John F. Stone, Abington Superintendent of Utilities. Uh, good evening, Councillors. Uh, this uh, issue was a settlement of a lawsuit and an amendment to a contract which would allow the withdrawal of the lawsuit. It was recommended favorably by City Council uh, Finance Committee a couple of months ago, referred back last month, and then asked to be postponed so that all councillors could hear it. So I'm not sure whether the questions that are uh, of concern are financial or technical, uh, but we're all here to answer questions, and I'll see who you I know Councillor Stadinsky was the one that I made the request, that's correct. Come back to finance, so I'll let you Thank go you first, Councillor. Number one, Mr. Condon, uh, the people who called me live in the area where when somebody flushes, it goes to their neighborhood. So that's the kind of call I get. They have a concern. One of the major questions was, is this capped? The agreement is for 
whatever it was, I, it was 1.5 million. It was an increase, if the regulators allow it, an increase right. from a million to a million five. Their concern was it can't just randomly be upped in any way. This is a packed item. This is a contractual item. Something has been bargained. Is that correct? Well, they are afraid that, that that they're going to get, pardon the expression, flooded. No, I don't What's think so. I, I think the technical guys can answer that question better. But the uh, the increase is subject to the approval of the regulators, and the uh, technical guys on our side believe we have the capacity to handle the extra uh, the extra flow. Okay. But uh, I think you'd be better off asking either David or uh, or Larry that question. Well, I, I spoke I spoke to Mr. Norton, and I'll make it public knowledge. We can handle with no problem with what's uh, right. uh, being sent in. That's what the citizens just want to make sure that we're not going to try to handle too much where it's going to flood their neighbor, where they're going to have a problem with it. Okay. And I know our neighbors are here from the town uh, to observe, and, and I, I really, really thank them for coming because this is an important item. This is something we've lived with down in Ward 4 for an awful long time, probably for more than I've been alive, and that's a long time. <laughs> 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 but with that, you and me uh, both I'm going to thank you. I know so, there's some other questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you, Councilor Council Dubois. Um, how much is this lawsuit about? What's, what's, what's driving this lawsuit? How much, is the, how much is in question? How much money? Well, the, the lawsuit is for a, an allegation that the city was disproportionately assessing uh, the town of Abington in how we were billing them. The city disputes that. We don't think that we were. Um, how much it's for, I don't know if it's a dollar figure Does anybody know? It. If nobody knows, I mean, come on. Nobody knows what it's for. I mean, how incompetent No, is it depends that? upon how it, settle, how it would settle out. I, I'm, I'm not sure how you could say how much the lawsuit is for. What they're saying is the method of the city billing right now is disproportionate to the town of Abington. Did you guys in any of these negotiations come up with a number of how much they think they've been um, underbilled or overbilled? Is it overbilling? Is it underbilling? No, it was overbilling. There wasn't a specific amount. They just alleged that the methodology in which they were being billed Around was, how much? was improper. Um, if you don't know a number, how can we say increasing their usage by 0.5 million, a half a million um, gallons or what a cubic gallons is even equitable to the, to the, to the outcome? I mean, how is this? Is there a number? Well, there, there is a... Maybe the other attorney has a number. No, there is a number. Let me just, if I may finish this thought, there is a number which we know, um, a monetary number we will realize with the increase to 1.5 million. What, what do you what do you say? That I would like to hear from the other attorney in the room. You can, Counselor. Okay. What this results in is about $100,000 less revenue on an annual basis for the present billing system compared to what this is. That would work out to about 3.3% 3.3 cents per gallon compared to 3.2 cents per gallon. That's the difference in the charge here. The what the result would have been if we'd stayed under the other system, which we think we would have won in court, but we'd have had to spend money on it, and the entire thing would have been up to the court itself, is another, is another matter entirely. Because they're saying that a methodology for charging about half of what they got charged was disproportionate. And that's what we dispute. Mr. Attorney, I'm sorry I don't know your last name. Uh, are you, what is your last name, sir? Petrini. I'm uh, Christopher, Christopher Petrini. Thank you very much for being here. You're welcome. Could you tell me how much the, the town of Abington, what, what amount are they, they, they thought to bring lawsuit over? Uh, Mr. Condon uh, accurately described what the outcome is. Uh, the, the town of Abington was of the view that we were being, they were being overcharged approximately 50%, but it was, uh, it was that issue in the case, and we worked out a settlement that's, we believe, fair to both sides. So 50% of what they are paying, they say that they are being overcharged. That was a position that we had in the case, but again, we negotiated out a settlement. That's how these things are. Both sides have different And positions. how much are they paying annually around? I'm just trying to get my head around what this case Pre is on about. The, at the present, they pay about $1,200,000 a year. So they pay $1,200,000 a year. That's right. Year. Of which and they're about, saying that they should have only been paying 600000 a year. Well, what they're saying is that bill was comprised of two pieces. 
The first piece was a proportionate share of the cost of the treatment plant on a gallons basis, gallons of flow for Abington versus total gallons. The second piece was for the use of the city's collection system, and it was imposed in a contract amendment back in 1996, and that piece was worth about five hundred dollars or $600,000 a year. That was the piece which was part of that earlier amendment which they objected to. So about half of what was being charged to them on an annual basis they thought was disproportionate. And how far back would they be going on this lawsuit? Well, the lawsuit, I don't know how far back it would go. I'm, I'm not an attorney, but the amendment in question goes back to about 1997. So, but they didn't bring it up until now when they need more usage? They need more no, capacity? No, they brought, they brought it up um, three years ago, I think, three or four years ago. Would we win this lawsuit? What do you think, Mr. Nassarella, Attorney Nassarella? Is this the lawsuit we can win? I mean... My opinion, we'd have won, but that's the time. Hmm. Yeah. It's the answer what you can answer. I'm not trying to pressure you here. I think the city of Brockton had a very strong position in many, many of the elements, uh, but it is always, and I think most lawyers will agree on this, far better to resolve a matter in a structured settlement where both people can after negotiation come to something they both can live with rather than leaving it with the speculation of a judge or a jury. Um, there are no such things. I, yeah, I do believe we would be successful, but I'm also a realist that a lot of different things can happen. I'm, I'm aware of the protracted amount of litigation, the substantial cost. Just the negotiation itself was two and a half years. Every other month with six people from the city of Brockton, Commissioner Thorison, Dave Norton, Mr. Rowley, Jay Condon, myself, and Caitlin Leach meeting with the contingent from Abington every other month. That was for two years. Uh, two and a half years we worked this thing out, so it was somewhat complex, long and arduous, to leave it in the hands of a jury of lay people that may not be in tune with some of the complex issues or a judge who's moving a lot of cases, I thought would be uh, far more tenuous and dangerous than us trying to work it out. So we came down to an agreement that I thought was fair and equitable for both sides going forward. So there forward. would be, um, if it went to a judge, there would be, the judge would come down with a financial determination if it went against us. Is that what you're saying? Yes. The judge would say, you owe the town of Abington <clears throat> 600,000, 6 million, what, what are the potential claim? Like when you looked at it in your analysis, what was the low end, what was the high end? Well, it could have been hundreds of thousands of dollars, but in addition to that, it also could have put us into a term of years that we may or may not have wanted. It could have uh, put us uh, into a situation about tonnage uh, and volume that we may or may not have wanted. It, would, uh, it could have spun off into a lot of different directions that I don't know would have been as um, equitable as that which we agreed upon. Could because the during, the, during the negotiation, we had the benefit of engineers on both sides sitting down and giving us realistic numbers instead of playing to a jury as to what can be accomplished or not accomplished. Sure. Could the town of Abington have gained more capacity through this lawsuit? Or would they have just been gaining money, a monetary settlement? Um, perhaps both. Yeah. How, but let, I, that's, that's in the best case scenario for them. Yeah. My feeling was uh, would have been more in a monetary as opposed to tonnage. Because right now they're at their, almost at their maximum for hookups. So when they want to have a hookup in Abington, it has to come through this body, this city council body. I've done it before for residents in Abington, so I know that that would be the proper motion, a proper course. So what we're doing now by voting to approve this I would much prefer to pay, have that, I would much prefer for the city to pay a couple hundred thousand dollars, as you say, than to well, give I'm throwing them. throwing a number out in the air. I don't yeah. you know, maybe substantially then, more than that. Than to give Abington 500,000 gallons of um, cubic usage of our wastewater treatment system, because I think if we were to negotiate a settlement, a, a negotiate for a additional tonnage across the table once this lawsuit is over, we would get more money for that 500,000. Um, gallons of capacity than we're going to be seeing here. Because as I see it, what we're doing now is we're signing off on Abington developing the whole Abington side of North Quincy Street with condominiums. I've already been approached by three of the owners of large tracts of land on the Abington side of um, North Quincy Street. They are already in process talking to the town of Abington about putting 
hundreds and hundreds of condominiums. Just one owner planned on putting 300 condominiums on uh, behind where the little gas station that turned into a, um, a, a like a secondhand store is. 300 condos just there. And then all the way down at North Quincy Street will then become condominiums. We could, if it came through the council, be charging them more money for that. Never mind having some kind of a negotiation stand saying, if you're going to be putting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of more cars onto North Quincy Street, you have to pay for traffic lights. Right now, the intersection of North Quincy, Boundary, and Chestnut is rated F for fatalities. The state, it's on an urgent list to get that, that intersection reconfigured with the traffic light. We've already had six people die at that intersection in the last two years. Six people. So if we are going to more or less sign off on Abington turning all of North Quincy Street to condos with none of our say in it, I want you to know that the residents of Ward 6 are going to be killed more often. It is a dangerous situation on North Quincy Street. <coughs> The state last year appropriated $1.5 million onto the transportation bond bill specifically for this intersection. Our state representatives and senators and delegation pushed for that as important as the downtown two-way traffic. Those are the only two things that Brockton appropriated onto the transportation bond bill. It's that important. So this is going to have a ripple effect. And I don't know if that you were in knowledge of that when you, when you made this, this agreement, but it's going to have some severe consequences on the residents, not only of Ward 6, but anybody that traffics on North Quincy Street. So I really urge my fellow councillors to vote no on this and send them back to the table. If I may, uh, yes, I was aware that perhaps increased volume would allow them for some increased development. I think this, and all due respect, a lot of large skips and jumps and assumptions made here with the level of development, because it still has to be confined within the amount of uh, increase that we are allowing. Uh, and that was driven by what our engineers had told us we had substantial capacity for. So we weren't putting us into a situation where we were in tight quarters. It was because we could easily allow that increase. I don't think the amount of increase to a half a million is proportionate to the uh, large amount of development you described. We learned that it was the other night. We learned that it was the end, that beyond the end of Three, three Mile Road. That's a whole other tract of land for our condominiums in Abington that Brockton will have no control over. We won't be able to negotiate to get extra money out of them. We won't be able to do anything. We're more or less just handing over the wholesale development of North Quincy Street into condominiums, and we're, not, and we're kissing them on the hand as they walk out the door. So I, I really don't have any more questions. I'm, I'm in opposition to this. I think it's not wise for the city of Brockton. Thank you, well, Mr. Chairman. I will also say if Council. I may, um, uh, Council President, this matter be that we're discussing now is still open litigation. The complaint is still pending. It has not yet been resolved uh, until perhaps an agreement is signed. Right. The alternative to Councilor Dubois' wish would be to go back into litigation, which I do not advise, I do not suggest. I think that the agreement that was structured over two and a half years is fair and equitable both financially which Mr. Condon can vouch for, and also engineering, which the gentleman to my left can vouch for. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Attorney. Thank you, Thank you for that. Councilor Bonds? Yes, just one quick question, um, uh, Attorney Nazarella. In the agreement, was Brockton asking the EPA for, the, um, for that increase in the... Uh, well, we would still have to go through the regulatory consent in order to... Um, get all of those different increases. But that, that was one of our, or one of the stipulations that we would have to adhere to in order to, Correct. to fulfill this agreement. Correct. Okay, uh, in your opinion, um, when you, in, I read your letter, you said that you went over the final agreement with um, Assistant Solicitor Leach. When you say fair and equitable, it, uh, and, and in, in my finite mind, I'm not a lawyer, so if they give something, we give something. Lawyers have finite minds too, so it's oh, okay. Okay, well, <laughs> when when we give something, they give something. We give something, they give something. Is it possible that we may have to give, 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 and then they give, give? No, I think that the in this that agreement, giving and taking is limited to the four corners of that agreement. It's not that once we enter into this, they're going to start working it up 
in, in seeking um, greater capacity. Everything that is in that agreement is the agreement. No, no, right, that's what I mean, in the agreement. Did we have to concede a lot more than what we may have if we were to go forward with this? No, I don't believe so. What the city gained in the agreement mm -hmm. was the ability to continue to treat the town of Abington as a common user of the system for both the collection system and the treatment plant. Mm -hmm. That's what the old agreement provided for. They didn't like how that cost was calculated. This calculates it in a more transparent and easily understood way, but nonetheless, we continue to get the charge to the town of Abington as a common user of the system based on the amount of flow they put into the collection system and then at the treatment plant. We gained that. In terms of the additional capacity, that's a win for both sides because Abington was interested in the additional capacity, but the city was interested in the additional revenue that would come from that additional capacity because the plant and the collection system has the capacity to handle that additional flow, which means when they, as they build up to it, we'll get additional revenue. With respect to Council Dubois' comments about whether we could have extracted additional concessions from them if they were looking to build in the future in a different way, mm -hmm. I don't know the answer to that question because at the time we were doing the negotiation, we were being sued. So I think the city gained fairly its objectives. That's why we signed off. I think the town feels it gained fairly its objectives. But the amount of difference in revenue to the city isn't an awful lot. It's from 1.2 down to 100,000 at the present gallon. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Any other questions, Councillors, in regards to this matter? Need a motion? Motion to approve. I'll second for the vote. I request a roll call Motion vote. Motion to approve, and it's been seconded, and a roll call vote has been requested on this item. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Shirley Azak? No. Shana Barnes? No. Timothy Cruz? Yes. Dennis Tanapoli? Yes. Michelle Dubois? No. Dennis Ioneri? No. Tom Monahan? Yes. Moises Rodriguez? No. Jazz Stewart? Yes. Paul Studinsky? No. The nays um, is six, yeas are four. Goes back to the uh, full city council with an unfavorable recommendation. Thank you. Next item we have before <coughs> us is item number 12, Madam Clerk. Resolved that all these fairs and Ann Beauregard come before a committee of this council to discuss plans to establish a committee on tourism for the city of Brockton. Invited all these fairs resident and Beauregard resident. No, this is it. Good evening. 15. Hello. How are you? <laughs> okay. Thank you uh, for having us this evening. Uh, Ollie just had to step out. Okay. Sorry about that. That was a little bit of a surprise. I. Uh, have uh, handed all of you the proposal just to have an idea here of what is expected and what uh, people are looking at and I also have a copy of it up here so others can see it um, and I'm sorry I mean Gross. I just wanted to have something others could see from the above and uh, just simply highlighted this is a group of individuals from the city of Brockton that wish to form a committee commission uh, with the support of City Council to review, research, and implement a plan to create tourism opportunities. This process would allow for further economic growth, better marketing for businesses, and positive impression of the historic community. And then I've highlighted here what we've done so far and uh, what we need to do. And that's, that's what you have on the first page. And on the second page, you know, the economic impact of uh, travel and tourism in the Commonwealth from uh, last year, uh, 2012 to 2013. Uh, for example, state and local taxes, 1.2 billion, job support, 129,000, and uh, wages paid, 3.96 billion. Uh, some of what Broughton has to offer, I just used a few examples because Broughton has several, and I wanted to keep this brief and informative. Uh, other factors included here that highlighted, I uh, use the food economy here because this means restaurants and other opportunities that tourists, uh, uh, how would I say, find as a destination uh, or 
that, uh, that can be taken advantage of when the uh, individuals seek um, this as a destination for, let's say, a historic site or a sports event. And um, other factors uh, also is uh, the various growth industries and how social media is really helping to promote communities that were really never, how would I say it, visited before or re uh, the realization that they had, whether historic significance or recreational significance. And the last part is the reinforcement from other uh, groups here and um, highlighting that the Metro South Chamber of Commerce with the uh, Secretary of Housing and Economic Development back in April of 2014 uh, posted an event here recognizing what they refer to as branding at the Fuller Craft Museum. This is to highlight, and the next quote here I have that they came up with here for this branding event, and the mayor is using it now. When brought in his home, everything is within reach. And this was to turn around and demonstrate what truly is in the community of Brockton. We've dealt with uh, others, OCPC, Oakley <coughs> Planning Council, Metro South Chamber of Commerce, various selected individuals, mass development, and other community leaders to uh, with a recent tour of Lowell, and then again followed by one of Brockton. So this would uh, be uh, this in information, by the way, of the statistics were provided by um, the Massachusetts Office of Travel and Tourism. So, um, again, those were last year's numbers uh, because of the way the fiscal uh, year works. But the idea was here primarily to highlight what the community has, how we can focus on bringing it together, and the reason you want to form some sort of commission is so that there's balance, regulations, and we can look at feasibility, research and development, and work closely with these other um, organizations that I've mentioned, and um, as I highlighted here, that we've worked um, in the past with the um, Plymouth Visitors Bureau of Con Con Convention and Tourism, and we really want to work on this to get on board with the program that they're organizing within Plymouth County to highlight 2020 celebrating 400 years of the Plymouth's land, Pilgrim's Landing in Plymouth, which at this point includes us also. So having said that, what they want to do is bring people continuously into this um, region and highlight it and focus on funding, whether that be at the state level or through grants and other uh, programs, and also to continue as uh, 2020 approaches and uh, after 2020, and not just simply for a, uh, a certain amount of time, and that, that, that continuity exists and um, be taken advantage of. And I just want to highlight that gateway cities that have uh, been successful, none of them in our uh, region at this point, uh, were uh, in Bristol County, Fall River, and New Bedford, and on the North Shore, Lowell, for example, all communities that at one time were never considered destinations and tourism and, and visitors areas. And I just have on this other board here, This is just to highlight within three and four blocks of here what's going on in two months or what will be going on within two to three months, just within this block. And uh, that's that, uh, these few blocks of City Hall. And that's excluding every other event, every other activity, every other historic site that already exists in this community. So this was just an information and hopefully will gain your support. So I'm prepared to answer any questions. Very good. Thank you, Ann. Thank, uh, thank you for the presentation and okay. all that you do within the city in itself and within the community. Thank you. Um, question, I'll take Councilor Azak, then Councilor Stewart. Good evening, Ms. Beauregard. Um, actually, this is mine and Council Monahan's resolve, so thank you for being here this evening. And um, we, I know you just wanted to share with us some ideas of putting together this Tourism Commission, which I think, as a city, we deserve to, ha you said one key word, which was together. We have a lot of different organizations, but um, a different things that are available, but it's bringing them together that we need, so I think that's what I'd like to see done, so. Uh, Thank you, and um, and I just want to clarify to everybody that this is an idea that was brought that want, that's brought forth. But in the end, it is up to the mayor to decide whether there is a commission or a committee, a tourism committee. So thank you for being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Councillor Stewart. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, Ms. Beauregard, how are you? Thank you for your work in the city as well. Um, so I, I think my colleague answered one of the questions. I wasn't certain if you were proposing that this commission uh, be um, sponsored by the city or is it in collaboration with the Chamber of Commerce? Well, I was hoping it would be sponsored by the city because we have to remember one thing, and this is the Metro South Chamber of Commerce, and we are the city of Brockton. So I primarily want to focus on with Brockton, and to answer Councillor Azak's question, yes, I've submitted the same proposal to the mayor and had spoken with him previously on this. Uh, any ideas on who your, how the committee will be staffed? I mean, so the volunteers, what type of committee members you're looking for? Certainly, it would be commitment, certainly with the background, it would help in finance. That's why Ollie Spears, uh, with um, his affiliation with um, the bank he's employed by, uh, we want other business groups uh, here um, this evening, for example, is Bill Hogan, proprietor of Hogan's Hobbies, who is running a 10-day event in downtown Brockton beginning next uh, Friday evening and you know, spanning for uh, a week and a half. So we want uh, business owners, we want government officials, we want individuals with their input, their background, and definitely with, um, how would I say, the support of institutions of higher learning. I had highlighted here Massasoit, but you know, we're surrounded by institutions of higher learning and working with them because the whole idea is feasibility and research and development and not as, as the presenter from the executive director, Paul Cripps, from the um, Plymouth County um, co you know, Convention and Visitors Bureau had highlighted that it's vital that you research every aspect. He cited where they were having problems with signage and how people didn't realize where they were, that lost, or that they had difficulty finding out about uh, you know, hotels or other services. So that's why, first of all, we want to learn from them, continue researching, and apply it to what best suits the city of Brockton. Okay, um, that's great. And I'm assuming that part of uh, whatever's proposed will lay out what, who, who, the, who the ideal membership would look like. And I ask that question because I sure. think the new city planner should be a part of this. I think this is a, a very important initiative. And my, I do have a marketing background, as, as you know, and I do think that, um, you know, like Plymouth, uh, one of our biggest treasures that may get people coming here, because we're really far off the traditional path for tourism, um, but people will journey if there's a sort of a poignant reason to do so. And the fact that we have some of the first wired buildings in, in the world, I think, is um, um, the anchor that could then get people to travel great distances to come here to see those, um, that, that architecture, uh, and because it's, and some of those buildings are located right close to the Trinity development and it's off from the train station, I feel like there needs to be some city planning about how that's organized in a way for, for tourists and then using that as the anchor point, what happens next once those tourists get here. And so I, I think it's very important. I think we want some expertise on planning and, and likely ex expertise on tourism as well as marketing to be on this, <laughs> on this group. Um, uh, so those are my comments. I, I, I think this is, this is very important, and I'm optimistic that the mayor will su support it, and I can imagine my supporting it if I feel we have the right people with the right skill sets uh, putting this together. So thank you for your work on it. Oh, okay, thank you for highlighting that. And just if I can say, I've already spoken with uh, Gary Leonard, the new uh, Main Street manager, and I wanted to let the city planner get in the door, but uh, I'm hoping to speak with him at some right. point. Thank you very much, thank Ms. You. Beauregard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilman. Okay. Any other questions for Ms. Beauregard? Okay. Councilors? Motion favorable. Favorable okay. recommendation. Motion has been made and seconded to recommend back to the full city council with favorable recommendation. All in favor? Opposed? It goes back to the full city council. Thank you and thank you thank again you. and thank you for all that you do for the community. We appreciate it very favorable. much. We're on our last, um, I believe, last item, which is number 15. Resolved that the police chief, Robert Hayden, be invited to appear before the Finance Commission to discuss any and all limitations placed on his ability to work more than 960 hours per year, pursuant to General Law Chapter 32, Section 91B and C. Invited Robert Hayden, Interim Chief of Police, Martin Brophy, Treasurer, Tax Collector, Maureen Cruz, Personnel Director, and Philip Nosrella, City Solicitor. Council, as I said earlier, the chief could not be here this evening because he is on vacation, nor could um, Martin Brophy, the Treasurer, or Ms. Cruz. She's uh, 
also unable to attend. Mr. President, Mr. Um, so, Council Dubois, was your? Could I make a motion to to uh, postpone this to the first finance committee meeting in November? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. That this be postponed to the first finance meeting in November. All in favor? Opposed? They'll have it on the first meeting in uh, November. Uh, any personal uh, uh -huh. business? Council Denapoli, you were? Monahan first. Council Monahan. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I know. <laughs> I'm going to get out of the state. Uh, I'll be having a ward meeting this Thursday, September 18th, at George's Cafe at 7 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Barnes, did you? I did not know. Uh, Councilor Azak did. Okay. Councilor Azak. Councilor, let me go to Councilor Denapoli, then we'll go to Councilor Aza. Councilor Denapoli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's how I had it set up anyway. <laughs> well, so. to, to, Tom's meetings first. Uh, on, on Wednesday, October 1st at the Plus School, I will be having a ward meeting on, in Ward 5. Uh, I just received uh, notice from the state and the DPW commissioner that uh, Ward 5 is going to get almost $6 million in road construction and road work and bridge work, and it, it does include the Plouffe School. So we are going to have the meeting on October 1st at 6.30 at the Plouffe School. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Azak. I would just like to remind everybody that this weekend is the Greek festival, uh, festival at the um, Greek Orthodox Church on Oak Street. And um, so it's actually, I believe, the 18th, 19th, and the 20th. So I hope we see all you there. It's going to be, um, it's an, become an annual event, and it's filled with music, um, great food, and plenty of entertainment. So bring the family. And we also have another event going on this weekend at the Brockton Historical Society. It ha it, they're having their grand reopening. They've done a lot of work to the building, and from what I've heard, it looks really great. So I look forward to seeing you guys there. And that's this Sunday, September 21st, from 12 to 4 p.m. So that's at 216 North Pearl Street. Thank you. Thank you, Council. And I'll get mine in. I'll be hosting a Ward 3 meeting on Tuesday evening, September 30th, at the John F. Kennedy School at 7 o'clock p.m. That'll be, again, Tuesday evening, September the 30th. Uh, there'll be more um, in regards to my guest uh, in, in the coming uh, week. What time? Uh, any, other business before, any other business before this committee? Seeing none, meeting is adjourned. All right. Oh, what time?